Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you are. Welcome to the Arcadia Poncho Knit Along. This poncho is designed by Melissa Labar and features Barocco Vintage Yarn. We have kits set up on our website, onebighappy.com, that include the yarn and pattern book. You get 15 patterns plus the one that we'll be making. In this episode, we'll go over the supplies and pattern, then cast on and knit the cow portion of this super comfy poncho. If you have any questions or comments while you're knitting along with me, leave a comment below. Are you ready to knit? Let's get started. The yarn that we'll be using today is the Barocco Vintage. The color that I chose for this lovely poncho over here is called Petunia. It is 52% acrylic and 40% wool and 8% nylon. So it's super easy to work with. It's also washable. So follow the care instructions on your label, but I will tell you that I ran mine through the washer and dryer and it did just fine. It's super soft once it's been blocked and I really enjoyed using it. We will also be following along in the pattern that is in the Barocco Portfolio Volume 2. This book comes along with our kit, so these two come together, plus all the yarn that you'll need to make your poncho. The needles that I'll be using today are the Chowgu interchangeable needles. Now you can use a fixed needle. There it's a US size 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter. The pattern indicates two different cord sizes um, so that you are, when you start off at the beginning, it's smaller. By the time you get to the end, it's longer. So you will be using two different cord sizes. When you're using the interchangeable set, it's a little bit easier to swap out those cord sizes. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about this interchangeable set. I love this. I personally own these and use them all the time. When you open it up, you have two sets of cords, and one says small, that's for the smaller size uh, needle tips, and one says large, and that's for the larger size needle tips. And it's super easy to use. We are using the seven. These are the tips that we'll be using. Also inside of this kit, we have some goodies. Let me pull these out and show you what we have here. We have a needle sizer. And what this will do is you slide your tips through the hole and it'll tell you um, what size you're using. So like, I'm this is a seven. It'll slide all the way through. When it slides all the way through, that that's the right size. When it doesn't, that's a size too small. So that's how I tell. And it says a seven, 4.5 millimeter here. That's how you tell that. On the needles themselves, there is a printed size, but sometimes it's kind of hard to see. So you can always refer back to this needle gauge to check your size. We also have some cute stitch markers here in different sizes and colors. And then these are the tools that we'll be using to attach our needles, uh, needle tips to the cords. And we've got this little pin right here. And then these ends right here are uh, little stoppers you can put them in the end of your cord to secure your work if you're putting it down for a while. Um, but we won't be using these right now, but they're great to have. We are using, let's see, size seven, and then we need a 24 inch. So I'm gonna open up these cords and I'm gonna find the middle size one. That's the one I need. Okay, this one right here. Set those over here. Okay, so I have the cord that I need right here. Here is my tip. It's super simple to put these two together. They just screw right in. Then there's this little hole here. You slide your pin into there and it gives you some room to, to twist that to make sure that it's tight. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. Twist that in. Stick the pin through the hole and twist. Now I have secured my tips onto my cord and I'm ready to cast on. Okay, before we cast on, there's a few things that we need to do to prepare ourselves. First of all, our pattern is in the Barocco Portfolio Volume 2 and it's on page 52. 
and our gauge swatch. We want to go ahead and cast on um, and check our gauge. And to do that, I highly suggest using this method that I used right here. This is a mock knitting in the round. Now we want our gauge to be 19 stitches and 24 rows in four inches. And we make our gauge swatch in stockinette in the round. And the reason for that is because our project is knit in the round in stockinette and that's what we're gonna base our gauge off of so that we can get as close as possible to the design that we have here and everything kind of works out right. So, in your gauge swatch, I recommend knitting it in the round, but also floating across the back. When you float these back here, you see those strands that I have here floating across, then you're only focusing on the front, but you're knitting every single one of your rows. And this will mimic what you're doing when you're actually knitting the garment, um, actually knitting the poncho. So it is super simple. You just cast on, I think I cast on about 25, uh, no, I cast on about 35 stitches. So that way I had room on both sides of my 19 stitches in the center. And then I blocked it. Now when you're blocking your swatch, it's very important that you wait until after you have soaked it, when you're ready to lay it flat before you cut through the center right here. You just don't want everything falling apart while it's in the water and while you're um, letting it soak. So then you cut those strings on the side and you lay it out flat, let it dry 100%. You need to get it completely dry before you measure your gauge because if there is any moisture in there, it will give you a different count. And then once it is dry, your numbers will be off. And here's some helpful hints along the way. If you have too few stitches in your four inches, then you need to go to a smaller needle size. If you have too many stitches, then you need to go to a larger needle size. And that'll help you get your gauge. Again, that is 19 stitches, 24 rows in four inches. Okay, and along with that, now we need to also talk a little bit more again about the pattern now that we've got our gauge taken care of. This is a sized pattern. There are three sizes to go for. There's small, medium, and large. And the way to determine the size that you wanna make is by measuring your bust area. So now I'm gonna show you how to measure your bust so that you know which size you wanna make. Okay. You measure around the largest portion, under your armpit, across your bust, all the way around. So my lady here is 44, make sure, yep, all the way across. She's a 44. So I'm gonna be making the middle pattern, which is 42 to 50. Now, when you're choosing which size you wanna make, if you want a little drapier and a little bit more room, then you can go up a size. If you're right on the edge and you don't mind it being a little tight, you can go down a size. But pick whatever's comfortable for you and um, base that off of your bust size. Okay, so now that you've got your bust measurement, now it's time to prepare your pattern. My very first suggestion is make a copy. This is okay to make a personal copy for yourself. Make that copy and then make all your notes on that copy. The first thing you wanna do, find that size and then go through the entire pattern circling your size. This is a sized pattern. There's three different sizes, small, medium, and large. I'll be making the medium size. So I'm gonna go through and circle that medium size number. And for me, that number for casting on is 154 stitches. So first thing I'm gonna do is circle that 154. And sometimes I mark out the other two numbers just because I don't wanna get confused as I move along. Circle that number throughout your whole pattern or highlight it some way to indicate as you go along, you know what you're working on. So. We've got our pattern figured out. We know how many stitches we need to cast on. We know what size needle we're using. We know what size yarn we're using. Now we're ready to cast on. <laughs> got my needles. I'm gonna be using the long tail cast on. 
and I'm just going to use the single needle method. 154 stitches to cast on is a lot of stitches to try to figure out where to start. So what I would suggest is the wrap method. It's going to take a minute, it's going to take a lot of counting, but you'll be grateful in the end when you have enough yarn in your cast on because who wants to run out of yarn when you're at like 120 and you have 30 more stitches to cast on and you have to take them all out and start over. So I highly suggest wrapping, 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 and when you get like 10, take that off. I'd rather have too much yarn than not enough in this situation. There's 20, 30, 40, see this little trick here? 50, 60, 70. You're gonna do that until you get to about 150 and then give yourself a little slack. You'll have enough yarn to finish your project and you won't run out of yarn when you're casting on. Okay, so that's my little tip there, so you're not wasting a whole lot of time finding that spot. To do your long tail cast on, the first thing you want to do is make your slip knot. You'll slide your needle in, cinch that up. Okay, so I've got my slip knot here. I'm in the slingshot position. I'm going to go under my thumb, under my index finger, and through. Now, we have a large number of stitches that we are casting on. One of, another one of my tips is find a number that you're comfortable with and put a stitch marker there. So like if I cast on 20 or 25, sometimes it's easier to count by 25, you cast on the 25, place a stitch marker there, start again in your counting, cast on another 25 or 50, place another stitch marker, and that way if you lose count, you can just go back and count your stitch markers and know, hey, I've got 50 here or 20, 25, whatever number you choose. And then count by that number. Trust me, there's a lot of stitches here, but this breaks it down and makes it a lot easier. Okay, so let me show you what 154 stitches cast on look like. I'm almost at 154. This is 150 stitches. I have my stitch markers every 50 stitches. So there's 50, 100, 50, I got four more. And let me tell you, I was playing a little bit of yarn chicken here. I've got four more stitches to cast on and that much yarn. There's one, two, I can do this, I can do this. Three and four. I probably could have used a little more slack but I made it, 154 stitches cast on. Okay, so I've got my stitches cast on for the size that I'm making. You'll cast on the number of stitches for your size. The next thing, we need to make sure that all of our stitches are going the same direction. No twists. And we don't want any twists because if we do, we'll be making a Mobius instead of a cowl. And then you won't be able, it'll be all twisted and we don't wanna have it twisted. So I usually like to, when I'm, Making sure all of my stitches are going in the same direction, I like to start on one end and just follow it around. And by this, I'm talking about this ridge that's created when we do the cast on. So I like all of my stitches to be on the outside of this needle, the ridge to be on the inside like this, and sometimes laying it down on a flat surface will help. Just make sure everything is going in the same direction. I don't know how all of these got twisted, but they do. Okay. Oh, I got another twist here. There we go. It was a lot of stitches to cast on. Things move around. And I got almost there. Okay, here we go. They are all going. Take the time to make sure that these are all going the same direction. This is very important and it makes a difference, it really does. Okay, all of mine, as you can see, are all on the inside here. Now we are gonna join in the round, and I like to do this little method where I swap stitches to secure this 
first stitch. And by doing that, I bring everything to the tips of my needles. One of my tricks that I like to do when I'm joining in the round is I like to swap the first stitch and the last stitch. And to do that, I'm going to pull this first one off. It's held secure by the slip knot that we created. And then I'm going to slide the last stitch that I cast on onto the first needle. And then I'll pick up that first stitch on the second needle. So in essence, I have crisscrossed those two stitches. It just secures that um, just an extra step. You don't have to do that. I just like to do that to make it um, more secure. Now for this pattern, we are going, we're starting on the cowl, which is the top portion right here. We're starting on this and we are knitting garter stitch in the round. It's a little different than garter stitch flat because garter stitch flat, you knit every row. But because we're in the round, we're going to knit the first round and then purl the second round. So I'm gonna show you how we get started here. We are knitting the first round. We need to place a stitch marker right here to indicate the beginning of our round. So let me grab my stitch marker. And I'm using the Mindful Chakra stitch markers. They're my new favorite stitch markers right now. I really like them. Slide that on there. And then slide my needle in. And knit. Now I'll continue doing this all the way around until I get um, back to the original stitch marker, the one with the tail. As I go around, I'll be dropping these stitch markers that I put in. These were just the ones that I used when I was casting on to keep track of how many stitches. So go ahead and continue this round of knitting, then another round of purl, and then knit and purl all the way until your project reaches seven inches. And then I'll show you how to do the decrease. Okay. So we're gonna play a little pretend here. You are going to have seven inches of garter stitching before you get to the decreases, but I wanted to show you on this little sample on how to do the decreases. After seven inches, then you're gonna do one whole round of decreases, and to do those, you do it on a knit round. You knit five stitches, two, three, four, five, and then you knit two together. And to knit two together, you take your right needle, you slide it under two stitches, and simply just knit those two together like that. And then you knit another five. You do that all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker. Then you go back into, uh, you'll do a purl round, and then you'll do a knit round, and you do that for another seven inches. So your cowl will end up being 14 inches. Now I also want to go over something that happens along the way. As you're knitting along these first seven inches, you will inevitably run out of yarn and need to start a new ball of yarn. Some people choose when they're changing to a new ball that they just leave it pick up and start knitting and then weave in the ends later. And you can totally do that. But I wanna show you another way to join a new ball of yarn using a technique called the Russian join. So what I'm gonna do is, um, this is not the yarn that I used to make the poncho, but I wanted to pick two contrasting colors to show you how to make this join. So let's say that this is what we're working with here and we wanna join in this new ball of yarn. I'm gonna lay these out here like that. And then we'll be using a tapestry needle. I'm gonna be using my bent tip needle. These are from Clover. Okay, we're gonna cross these two. So this will be the one that you're working with um, in your poncho right now. And this will be the one that you're joining. I'm gonna thread one end. And we're going to take our needle and we're going to slide it through the strands of yarn. So I've got the pink one 
threaded through my needle and I'm putting my needle through the other side of the pink yarn. See how I'm catching those in there like that. Just kind of wrapping it around there. And then I've got the blue yarn dangling in between. I'm going to slide that through like that. And then I'm going to pick up the blue and thread my needle here. And I'm going to pick up right here as close as possible and wrap that yarn through the needle. Take your time on this. The more you get it wrapped through that yarn, the nicer the appearance. Okay, so I did that for a little ways there. Slide that through. And now I'm gonna straighten it all out. See, it seemed like it was a little loose. But I'm pulling pretty hard here. This yarn's about to snap, and that join is staying joined. Then you just go ahead and you trim off your tails, and you have one continuous piece of yarn, and you cannot see where that join is. And you can just continue knitting as you go along. It will work its way into the fibers, and then also, too, when you block it, it just kind of relaxes in there. And then you don't have to weave in your ends for each side of that. They're all connected and you can keep knitting as normal. So that's how you do the Russian join. So once you have your cow measuring 14 inches, just like this, give yourself a pat on the back. All that garter stitching in the round is so totally worth it. Join me in the next episode as we start knitting the body portion of the Arcadia poncho. We'll work the cable pattern and start the increases that give this comfy poncho its flair. Remember, you can get a kit with the yarn and the pattern book at OneBigHappy.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!